Alright ladies and gentlemen, I'm here on the channel, and I'm here to talk about uh, some NBA. So let's get into it. So a question that was asked to Rashid Wallace is, uh, would the 2017 Warriors beat the 2004 Pistons? And he said, end quote, we would have beat the shell them because for the simple fact that they couldn't match up with us at any position staff, not a defender. He would have had to guard Rip Hamilton. Draymond is too little, basically. He says they would smoke the Warriors. I don't know about that. But in a basketball series, they might get swept or win one game. And they need seven games to get past Richard Jefferson, Kenyon Martin, Kerry Kittles, and, like, and Jason Kidd. They wouldn't beat the 2017 Warriors. And I'm saying this is a Warriors fan. I'm not just being biased. But how do you expect to beat one of the greatest offensive teams of all time when your team only averaged like 90 points per game? They were more of an elite defense against Rima Tax and Sanders. Curry and KD would kill them from wrong range and Clay. What would you. Oh, oh, you're going to beat them with what? You're whopping 85 points? Yeah, okay. So. I think it was on the Roommate Show um, podcast. I think Jalen Brunson, Josh Hart do, does it. And. The Knicks locker room fart gate. This is a legit tweet. It wasn't Jalen Brunson, Josh Hart, J Julia Shreen, or Jericho Sam says the players over six five. The players black. We just started the NBA. I mean, we're in race. We're getting started with the NBA break already. I'm so confident this was a NBA central tweet. I guess the power of friendship. I mean, they're having fun outside baseball, I get it, but more grown men talking about Ford. God. So, per The Athletic, Anthony Edwards and the Timberwolves chose not to participate in Inside the NBA interviews, standing in solidarity with Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy Gobert against criticism from Golden State Warriors forward Draymond Green, per At The Athletic. And quote here from The Athletic, Edwards was surrounded by a tight-knit team, one with such strong chemistry that it decides as a group that no player would appear on TNT's Inside the NBA postgame show after their victory in Game 4 in Dallas. Team sources told The Athletic, so team sources told this to The Athletic, the decision was a sign to support Gobert and Tance who were the subject of de de derisive and seemingly personal criticism and panelists from panelists and Golden State forward Dream on Green, end quote. I think it's a good decision because why is an NBA player hating watching as an analyst? And I guess you can say, well, having criticism isn't hating, but he was jumping up and down of excitement when Luke at that show over Rudy. And, and it kind of sounds like he's just hating. But he just disrespects Rudy Gobert. I mean, yeah, you like to, I mean, I like to make fun of Rudy Gobert, but like, you gotta be an analyst. You gotta be, try and be as unbiased as you can as an analyst. If you're a fan, I get why you can try and be biased and all that really go bigger. But you, if you're an analyst, you have to analyze the game. You can't just, oh, I don't like this player, so I'm going to put, put this narrative out there, like, oh, I hate this guy. Ever since they had Draymond, it's been pure hate coming out of his mouth instead of analysis. Anthony Edwards is a great dude. I mean, that's, a, that's respectable. I respect it. Respectable as hell, I respect it. Um, but there's not really much from NBA Central, but there is uh, something from Woj, so see if we have some stuff here from Woj, Adrian Woj and Arosky. So we had some news yesterday, um, about the Pelicans and Lakers. So ESPN sources with at Draft Express, the New Orleans Pelicans are planning to defer the Los Angeles Lakers first round pick until 2025, clearing the way for the out for LA to select 17th overall in the 2024 NBA draft. The pick conditions, remember, were a part of that Anthony Davis trade in 2019. I mean, I guess it's a weaker draft, so I guess it makes sense. I mean, it's not rocket science. Just 2025 is going to be stacked, and after the top picks. 
I don't think you're going to see many, like, great superstars or future stars come out of the middle of the draft. Oh, gee, I wonder who the Lakers are going to take there. Are they going to take Bronny? Um, it's kind of an interesting move. But it's a bad draft, but not so bad that they will pick Bronny with 17th. If they do, they should find Rob Planko. Uh, the Lakers also on the 55th pick in this uh, June, in the, the June draft. The Pelicans have until 11:59 a.m. Eastern Time on Saturday tonight to inform the league on their t of their intentions. The pick is in the final of the three first rounders. The Lakers owed in the Pelicans in the Davis trade. Thirty is one of those picks to draft Bronny. I'm telling you right now. So yeah, ba they basically cleared the lot, cleared the way for the Lakers slate at number 17 in the June NBA draft. Uh, Los Angeles Clippers coach Ty Lue has agreed on a new long-term contract uh, that will make him one of the league's highest paid coaches. Lue, who has been entering the final year of his deal, who had been entering the final year, final year of his deal, is considered to be one of the NBA's elite coaches. I mean, you did this, so now you got to pay your players starting with PG. If you're signed Ty Lue, now you got to try and re-sign uh, Paul George. If the Clippers are dropping back for Ty Lue, I don't see why they want for Paul George. It just feels inevitable. Bomber pays while he needs to get it done. So I think it'll happen. And um, they've been eager to get a new deal in the recent like days, and they finally got done a few days ago. Uh, the Wizards hired uh, Brian Keefe as their new coach. Yeah, that's you know, how exciting there for Wizards fans. A uh, Miami Heat assistant coach, Cron Butler, has granted a new four-year deal to remain on expulsion staff, so they've locked him up for the next few, few years. Um, David Fisdale is returning to Phoenix Suns in a prom prominent assistant coaching role, so David Fisdale is staying over there. A Knicks legend, um, Fisdale, David Fisdale. Turn back up here. Uh, the Cavaliers are uh, great, great permission to interview Gun State assistant Kenny Atkinson and New Orleans assistant James Brill for their head coaching job. So those are two names they're looking at. As um, and two more, they've received permission to interview as Knicks assi assistant head coach Johnny Bryant and Tate Heat's top assistant Chris Quinn. So four guys right there. Chris Quinn would be a nice uh, pickup. So we talked about Mike Brown a few days. How? The Kings and him kind of saw contract negotiations. Well, it came out last night. Sacramento Kings coach Mike Brown's agreeing on a new contract that takes him through the 2026-27 season. Uh, his agent, Warren Legary, tells ESPN, Brown, the 2023 NBA Coach of the Year, gets a new deal with a significant raise. So good for the Kings and good for Kings fans. Because um, he deserves to come back because I felt like he's done a good job for them. And they had brief, briefly tabled talks, but both sides were determined to reach a deal. As he returned, returned the Kings to the playoffs for the first time in 16 years, two years ago, and won 46 games and a playing game this season. So, they tried to phone, but they just couldn't. So, he gets a $4 million raise to $8.5 million. gets a $4 million raise to an $8.5 million raise on the 2024-25 season, left on his deal, and then $8.5 million annually in the two new season the contract sources tell ESPN. Deserved everything you got, so it's a big race. Deserved. I mean, that's all the NBA you want to talk about here, so until next time, have a lot. Peace.